as he walked by the sea of Galilee, Jesus saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, mending their nets, and he called them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Beloved sisters, beloved brothers, today the church celebrates the feast of St. James Apostle. And we ask that through the intercession of St. James, may we who are the Christ of today continue in the work of evangelization through Christ our Lord. To worldly celebrate, we now call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. You were sent to hear the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you, you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostles by the blood of your Saint James, grant we pray that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We carry always in the body the death of Jesus. Brethren, we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death, for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I believed and so I spoke. We too believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus 
and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. When the Lord brought back the exiles from Sion, we thought we were dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, on our tongues songs of joy. Then the nations themselves said, What great deed the Lord worked for them! What great deeds the Lord worked for us! Indeed, we were glad. Bring back our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the south. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, bearing seed for sowing. They come back, they come back with a song, bearing their sheaves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I chose you from the world that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, says the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something, and he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, Do you not know what you are asking? You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my chalice, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Today the church celebrates a beautiful feast, wonderful feast. Each time the feast 
is celebrated of an apostle, it gives the church an opportunity to renew her strength and also to plunge back into that ministry of spreading the word of God with power and vigor. Today we celebrate St. James. The first thing is that St. James was one of the twelve apostles, one of those who had the privilege of hearing directly from Christ, one of those who witnessed the powers of God demonstrated in the ministry of Christ. And then, the second thing we know of St. James is that St. James was the first to be martyred according to the narrative of the New Testament. He was the first to proudly die for the sake of Christ, the first whose blood was spilled among the apostles for the sake of Christ. And then from the Gospel of today, one thing is clear, that to be an apostle of Christ, to be a partner in evangelizing the world, one of the first requirements is service, an invitation to serve. Jesus says, if you really want to be great, if you really want to be mighty, to be successful in this ministry of evangelization, then we must first embrace service. Amen and amen. Now, there's something about service. To be able to serve successfully, we must learn to trust our instincts. It's very important to trust your instinct if you must serve. The instinct that we have is one of God's deposits, one of God's gifts to us. And our instinct will always tell us when to spring in, when to give a helping hand, when to speak kind words to the other. Our instinct will always let us know when to wake up from our slumber, when to do something, when to engage in action. And then the second thing about service is that we must act daily. It's not that I serve in January, I don't serve again until June, I don't serve again until December. Service is a daily thing. We must be disposed at all times, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, to be at service to our brothers and our sisters. And then we need to find the reason for service. Sometimes it is important to find a strong motivation to do what you are doing. And one of our powerful, strongest motivation and reasons for service is because our Lord and Master served. So if he, who is the model of Christianity, who is the star of Christianity, served, then that's already a strong reason for me to, to serve. Because the command is that, go and do as you have seen me do. Go and serve as you have seen me serve you. And then one final important thing about service is that we must try to establish a strong foundation for service, a powerful foundation for service. And that foundation for service is our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in serving, it's important to know that we are called to serve others, but that's not enough. We are called to serve ourselves also because we cannot abandon the self. And then finally, we are called to accept the mandate to serve. Remember that service is a mandate as we have received from the scripture today. As we go out today and as we celebrate in the spirit of St. James, may God give us the true spirit of service to one another, to ourselves through Christ our Lord.
James, the brother of John, was called from his fishing net to follow Jesus. Let us make our prayers assisted by the apostle who learned to serve others. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of service and availability among the clergy, let us pray to the Lord. For humble men and women who hold public office, let us pray to the Lord. For the growth of the church in South America, let us pray to the Lord. For courage to drink the cup of Christ's suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For pilgrims and those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our private intentions. Let us sum our intentions to the Lord as we say, Hail Mary. Praise the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. God our Father, may the prayers of St. James assist us as we make supplication to you. May the pilgrimage of this life be marked by our service of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Cleanse us, Lord, by the saving baptism of your Son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James, whom you willed to be the first among the apostles to drink of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundation, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore now and for ages unending, 
with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that you do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, our Bishop, Anselm, our Auxiliary, all the clergy, and your beloved children gathered here. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are all of us called to the Supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, through the intercession of the blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy the holy gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall take the offering for this place. flavors of good health in the mighty name of Jesus. And may Almighty God bless us and lead us as we move in the new week in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. blessings of God, the Almighty Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go glorifying God by our lives. Amen. Have a wonderful week ahead. I want to thank the Catholic televisions for covering this Holy Mass. May God continue to bless your ministry through Christ our Lord.